6-1 against Foxhill United. Heidelberg, on the other hand, a 3-0 win against Galaxy. It'll be interesting to track their form here and see which direction the campaign is going to go. Handshakes taking place out on the ground. And let's go to the teams. Heidelberg, the home team. Christina Fenua, their goalkeeper. Two, Monica Fenua. Four, Elizabeth Robers. Five, Ellie Torre. Six, Rebecca Saber. Seven, Steph Galea. Eight, Holly Balderston. Nine, Melissa Garcia. Ten, Sydney Allen. Twelve is Daniela Galuccio. And 18, Ellen Turner. Bayside United started. Its goalkeeper, Melissa Mazels. Three, Molly Burke. Four, Christina Karachi. Five, Sarah Walsh. Seven, Kirsty Shearing. Nine is Felicity Georgiopoulos. Eleven, Christina... Uh, 11 is Jessica Rao, I should say. 17, Emily Harvis. 18, Lucy Richards. 19, Margot Rabin. 22, Zoe Austin. Officiating crew, central referee is Janelle Samet today. She will have the whistle. On the benches for both teams. Heidelberg, Lisa Fenua, Emma Langley, Bridie Siri, Maria Kiusis and Mia Mossman. And Bayside United... Dottie Rendis, Shelby Green, Savannah Anastasopoulos, Lauren Ferruja, and Nina Bacalo. Assistant referees today, Chloe Gatt on the near side, Lucy Northrop on the far side, and Denise Horner is the fourth official. It's a rainy day, not cool though, it's uh, actually warmish, light breeze. Heidelberg in their home kit, yellow and black, and Bayside in their away kit, grey shirts, and sky blue shorts and socks. We're live and interactive on Facebook this afternoon. Andrea says, go Burgers. Mike says, good luck Sydney. As always with any Heidelberg game, lots of viewers tuning in. I'm sure there'll be plenty of keen onlookers around the NPL scene. Penultimate game of round three as we kick off. Bayside attacking the right of your screens. And of course, don't forget, tomorrow night, 8.30pm on your public holiday. We wrap up the weekend with the match between Berlin Lions and South Melbourne. Grand final rematch. Right now, though, hefty challenge right from the off as Sarah Walsh charges in on Steph Galea. Apologise for no scoreboard. I oh, don't. No, there is a scoreboard. Oh, I apologise. There is a scoreboard this afternoon, which is great news. We apologise for no scoreboards yesterday in those games. Will be resolved in future weeks. Ball into the box here it hasn't been held cleanly by Melissa Mazels. It's a great chance for the opening goal, and goes wide left from Elizabeth Robers. And that was an early opportunity for Heidelberg to strike first against Bayside. And Bayside shaky defensively last week after conceding six to Box Hill. That's the last thing they would have wanted there to go behind just seconds into the game. Of course, I mentioned yesterday's games. We had 10-0 as... Gabriel Marcage's Galaxy recorded their first win in NPL Women's against Southern United away at Frankston. Great call of the game from Sam Mills and Izzy Fenner as well on commentary. We also had Alamein 4-1 against Box Hill United. As the ball is cleared here from left back for Heidelberg by Ellen Turner. And called a 12, NTC nil over at Knox. Not an unexpected result. A couple of the score lines perhaps could have been anticipated, although Alamein will be thrilled to have separated themselves from Box Hill after a scoreless first half. Ball goes out here. Looking at the form line for these teams as we did prior to kickoff with Bayside coming off a 6-1 defeat. Prior to that, a 5-1 win against NTC. And Heidelberg, a competitive 2-1 loss to Bulleen on the first Monday night of the season. And then 
last week 3 0 right here against Galaxy United. Melissa Garcia hat trick that was the difference between the teams. Hello to everyone watching on YouTube as well, of course. Great numbers on our YouTube channel. I've got the YouTube channel open because I'm keeping an eye on St. Albans Saints versus Moreland Zebras in the men's and also Murray United away to Northcote City. So you sport for choice on your Sunday afternoon. Of course, all the games are simulcast on Facebook as well. So you see a battle for possession here between Shearing and Balderston. Bayside working out to the right side of defence. Back pass, putting Burke under a little bit of pressure, coming from Karachi, and it's cleared out. The coaches, Grant Spence on the bench for Bayside. Bill Mihalutis, back to the future coach of Heidelberg once again this season. Sydney Allen touching on. Interception comes from Lucy Richards. Now Monica Fenua, long ball, and Maisel's, after a less than convincing first save of the game, has things under control here. Of course, lots of keen onlookers. Calder assistant coach Ian Williamson, I see here in the stands, and his head coach Mark Torcaso has decided not to join him. Watching on line. Shout out to Mark. Attempted long ball here from Zoe Austin, and that is a bit tough for Jess out to go and chase. Looking at the formations for both teams. So Christina Fanua in goal, central defensive pairing. And there has been a late change to the starting 11 because Lisa Fanua has started for Heidelberg next to Monica Fanua. Ellie Torre at right back, Ellen Turner at left back. Rebecca Sabre, central midfield with Elizabeth Robers in front of them, Sydney Allen, and a front three of Steph Galea on the right, Holly Balderston on the left, and Melissa Garcia up top, which means there's been no room in the starting 11 for Daniela Galluccio today. And we'll put her on the bench then from the original lineups. As Lisa Fanua starts. pass here. Bayside's formation. Maisel's in goal. Sarah Walsh and Molly Burke, central defenders. Right back is Zoe Austin. Left back is Lucy Richards. Centre midfielders Felicity Georgiopoulos and Kirsty Shearing. In front of them appears to be Margot Rubin, the French import. Right wing, Christina Karachi. Left-sided forward Emily Harvest, and then playing up top at the moment is Jess Ow. So interesting that they've got Rubin in the number ten role, and Ow has the number nine. This is Holly Balderston sliding it towards Sydney Allen, and a good touch from Allen. She's in here. The shot's on, and it's held by Mazels. What a great deal of power behind it. Sydney Allen, the American, unmissable in the protective headgear. And so often a threat coming out of State League One, where she had a great campaign last season. taken by Ellie Torre. Karachi touches it back to Burke. Austin. Jess Al. Sabre. Trying to launch a diagonal ball towards Galea, but it's intercepted by Richards. Burke back to Mason's. Wind is picked up and it's favouring the end that Bayside are attacking in this first half. Taking a look at past results, we've had three years of NPL Victoria women's so far. Of course, a lot of 
player turnover for both these teams in those three seasons, so hard to get much of a read on it. Last year, Heidelberg won 3-0 and 4-3 in their two home games, but then in the third head-to-head -head lost 1-0 to Bayside down at Kingston Heath. Prior to that, it was Bayside that actually edged them two out of three. 4-0 and also 3-1 with a 2-0 Heidelberg win in between. And then in the inaugural season of NPL Women's, it was two wins and a draw for Heidelberg. So they just shade the head-to-head -head over the course of history. And here at Olympic Village, they are three wins and one loss. Rovers, Allen, Sabre. And a ball down the right for Galea to go and chase. Walsh trying to backtrack. Got there to make a contest of it. And then Galea with a heavy touch that's cleared off the byline by Richards. Out for a throw. Shearing. Saw Georgiopoulos out of the corner of her eye, but the passing channel is blocked by Garcia. Still trying to get involved in the game, Garcia. Hattrick last week. Not so prominent so far through nine minutes of this one. Torre on the right. One thing we do know is that Garcia is a great finisher. It's all about positioning for her. Caught offside so many times against Boleyn in the opening round of the season. But once she's in a shooting position, has shown herself to be very good player at finding the target and beating the keeper. Rubin slows things down. Burke pushing up. Long ball. Rubin makes the break. And Georgiopoulos following up, but the French player is offside here, and the central referee Janelle Samet is happy to whistle play dead as a result. Assistant didn't even raise the flag. Such was the blatantness of the offside there. Now Heidelberg through the right side. Allen is in behind Garcia. Oh, stepped over the ball. It wouldn't have counted. Flags up for offside. And Melissa Garcia in good position on that occasion, but unable to get a touch that would have steered it towards the target. That was Heidelberg's best chance to score. Allen is already proving adept at breaking through the Bayside midfield. Now it's Bayside's turn to go on the attack. This is a bustling run from Richards. Cutting it back in. Taken away. Sydney Allen. Counter attack. Garcia. This is danger for Bayside. Burke is going to follow Garcia over to the touchline. Allen. Garcia, can she chase the ball down? Got there in time? No, not quite. Beyond the line it went.
So a corner kick coming up for Heidelberg. Sydney Allen to take. Garcia, a good player in the air. The obvious target here. It sails over everyone, including the keeper. And with the swirliness, maybe not a surprise. He can cut the players some slack on struggling to read that first corner of the day. Great to have one of our commentators, Marcus Copsey, tuning in. Of course, he was behind the microphone on the men's match between Avondale and South Melbourne yesterday. Allen trying to weave through. Robins had that good early chance. Now Georgiopoulos. Harbus skips away from Torre, but is forced wide. Advantage given as well. Harbus drives it straight into the feet of Fenua, but Georgiopoulos follows up. And now Rabin switching flanks, where Karachi is loose. All about the delivery back in, though. We'll look up and see a penalty area filled with Heidelberg players. And the cross catches the wind and won't trouble any of them. Richards Shearing Bayside trying to enjoy a bit of time on the ball in their attacking half and the chain comes unstuck but the backtracking Zoe Austin will make it work Karachi Shearing Bayside working side to side Richards plays it into Harvis. And now the attempted through ball from Richards goes down to Fenua. Not a surprise to see Lucy Richards pushing up. Played midfield quite a bit for NTC at the NTC Challenge in Canberra. And of course, also a fantastic uh, super sub option for Alamein last year. Didn't get many minutes. She's called into defensive duty here and is able to guard Allen and see it behind for a corner. So another corner for Heidelberg. This one driven low, easy enough to defend for Georgiopoulos. Harvis gives it back. Rovers cross, Garcia was up but couldn't reach the ball. And so it's headed away by Austin. And then Richards clears. Jess Al holding it up for no one in particular. Rain just starting to ease now. News of a goal around the grounds. Northcote City have taken a 1-0 lead against Murray United. You can watch that one on the men's NPL Victoria page or, of course, on the YouTube channel. Got three live games going at the moment. Shearing attempted through ball here. It's going to run on and... Lisa Fenua is first to recover. Back to Christine Fenua. And Sydney Allen is trying to flick it on, but gives possession away. Georgiopoulos. Rubin. Crossfield pass. Will it sit up for Jess out? Not quite. Ellie Torre got to the ball first. But then the clearance is shallow. Harvis. Dangerous. Blocked once. Credit to Elizabeth Robers for getting her body in the way. Emma
Natalie Harvis is a player with a great shot on her, so Heidelberg were able to get there and stop her from being able to fire on Christine Fadua's target. Zoe Austin sends it wide right. Karachi this time does have numbers to aim for. Cuts it back. Jess out. And not enough elevation on the ball. Rabina escaped out to the back post. Garcia comes deep to use the body. Quick one, two. And then as Bayside back off, is happy to send it right back to the keeper. Foul here in midfield. Holly Boldiston, the player, knocked over. Allen's free kick. Over the head of Georgeopolis. Austin doesn't deal with it. Shearing. Clearance goes the wrong way. And then Molly Burke is able to get it out of the area if nothing else might be coming back in Turner denied and so the counter attack short circuited by Allen Richards goes chasing after the ball but Galea will get there first Torre knocking it on Sarah Walsh is there to intercept and then two Heidelberg players run into each other and they conspire to give away a throw Down the left side. Good duck in from Harvis off the chest of Lisa Fanua to some shouts of handball from players over on the outer side. Didn't have the greatest view of it. Trust the referee right there in good position, though. And now a long ball. Baldiston would have been offside, but safely at the feet of the keeper. And now nearly a costly giveaway from Burke. Grabs onto Garcia. And... Well, goal kick, I'm surprised there's not a foul. Melissa Garcia appeared to have a decent claim after Burke was nearly caught out. Got to say, that looked like a foul. So it's a little one that Molly Burke has been able to disguise. Bayside won't mind. And now Burke is back in possession. and the rain easing up. Now the sun is just starting to peek through. It's still quite blustery, favouring the end that Bayside are attacking. Fanua, blocked away by Harvis. About a quarter of the way through the day's action. Still scoreless. I mentioned the head-to-head -head record between these two teams. There, in fact, has only ever been one draw out of nine meetings in NPL Victoria Women's. back in 2016 so there has been a winner now in the last six consecutive games between the teams
Boulderston trying to break away from Burke and has got goal side. Still a lot to do on the tight angle. And Galea found that a tough ball to control. And Georgopoulos, that pass concedes 10 metres and possession also. Allen to Burke. Jess Au. Can't connect with Karachi. Shearing went over the ball a little bit there against Ellen Turner. Play continues. No foul. Ball into a one-on-two, Garcia. And flag is up. And offside has been one of the key things that has ended a lot of attacks that Melissa Garcia has been involved in in these first two weeks. Already continuing here today. down the line. Rabin making a break and is going to wheel onto the ball and is able to nutmeg Elizabeth Rovers cutting back Jess our shot and right up against the goal line held on to Lauren Fenua making the save exciting burst there from Margot Rabin showing what she's capable of but the end product just lacked the killer instinct there from Jess Au. Now Garcia back in the other direction. Deflected off the post, off the other post. Extraordinary. How unfortunate. Attempted long ball here, and offside flag goes up. And how about the chance at the other end? Melissa Garcia, so unfortunate, off both posts. Boulderston. And now Garcia can load up and try again. Boulderson, surrounded by defenders, cleared to Jess Au. Boulderson once more into the path of Sydney Allen, legs, no foul, play continues. Rabin. Boulderson. A couple of giveaways back and forth here. Who can connect the passes? Garcia in through the left side of the area and rolling safely into the hands of Melissa Mazels. Burke, long ball. Jess Au goes chasing, but that one will have too much on it. And rolls out for a goal kick. 
28 minutes past, still scoreless. Heidelberg now with the best chance to have separated the teams. Bayside with a, their own looks at the target. Nothing too strenuous for Fenua and Gold to have to go and save. Karachi. Back pass, dangerous. Sydney Allen's chasing. Maisel's led feet first, and that was enough to steer Allen wide left. Goal kick. Could have been a very dangerous situation. Maisel's clearly not thrilled with the defence. It was a really awkward back pass from Karachi that rolled beyond Burke and called the keeper into action. Walsh, Richards, challenged by Galea. Steph Galea prevails. Monica Fanua, Sydney Allen, down the right side. Garcia, with real pace, cutting it across and out of the area. to Maisels. Austin trying to press up. Caught by Balderston. And now Galea working the left side this time. He's going to cut in. Diagonal one way and the other against Shearing, but couldn't outfox her, couldn't get past. <laughs> Allen, long shots on here, but it's a scoop. And Maisel's may have just lost where her net was there because she insisted on touching the ball out even though it had drifted well off target in the end. So, corner kick coming up once again. Sydney Allen's had quite a number to find her radar. Has mixed it up. This one is... And Addy Climax sailing out for a goal kick. Monica Fenua, Sydney Allen, Fenua again, Garcia against Richards, decides to cut in and defer back Fenua, third pass in this passage, Sabre, loose touch, Bayside take it away, Karachi, Clearance by Sabre. Now Steph Galea turning it into the path of Rovers. Garcia is totally unmarked out on the right side, but Rovers just couldn't make a play at the ball. And so back to Maisel's it goes. And then the back pass. Dangerous. Jess out. Saved. 
what a chance for Bayside United. And Fanua comes up with an important stop. That would have been a goal against the run, given Heidelberg's attack just a moment ago. Almost incredibly costly. Karachi swings across in. Rabin against Fanua. And then Allen to Turner. going on here full and player Holly Balderston eventually back on her feet So Balderston went to ground. Shearing stayed down holding her head. The referees insisted here on a quick word to the trainer. But it seems to be all in working order. Kirsty Shearing, one of the more experienced players in the NPLW. Women's Premier League prior to that. And certainly one of the tougher players going around as well. It's going to take a bit more than that to knock her out of the game. Free kick for Bayside. It sits up after a couple of ricochets. And the referee has seen an infringement. So it will be Heidelberg ball. down to the good first touch but then is closed upon by Lisa Fanua. Ravine challenges again. Georgiopoulos dispossessed. Shearing. And that's a pass that's exploded off the boot out for a goal kick. Bayside just sensing the chance to be a bit more aggressive here in this game. Janelle Samet's going to have to play policeman here because it seems as though the level of back chat and by play is getting a little bit out of hand. We haven't seen a card yet. No need for one here either, just a talking to. Sabre. Long ball. Just sets it out, hoping that a player can chase it down. But Mazels has got that easily covered. Hurling it out to Austin. Bustling run from Zoe Austin. Gets it to Kardachi. Turner is right there. Allen. Committed to the ball, got there before shearing and slides it to an offside Balderston. Just a lack of awareness from both players, really. Balderston running offside and Allen playing the pass to her as well. from Walsh off the head of Rabin straight to Sabre flipped on by Allen Balderson it was two on two if they could control the ball but they couldn't Sabre follows through another long ball flag stays down here on Galea this time and Walsh is backtracking to get it away I think the Bayside defence might have had a decent claim for an offside shot there but they played the whistle and committed to running the ball down
Molly Burke. Through the right channel. And sitting up for Turner, who is going to play it back to Fenua. Ellen Turner. Flicks it off. Galea gets a second play at the ball. Balderston turning and playing it underneath the feet of Galea. And then Richards came across from left back to cover. Rope is trying to burst through the middle. Allen. This deflection might just hold up here for Garcia. Richards had to commit. Up goes Galea. And then Garcia coming back from an offside position. And I tell you what, that's a good finish. But it doesn't count because the flag was raised and the whistle had already gone. Fenua, and it's the player committing the foul, Rapina, who's come off worse of the two here, and has stayed down. Bit of concern for her as well. And as the teammates walk away, you can only assume that means that she's told them she's all right. Certainly no activity on the Bayside bench, so a proppy Margot Rabin gets back up. the head of Walsh. Through goes Torre. Ambitious attempt. Never really twisting back towards the target. Allen's little dink header. Garcia. Too hard to handle for Galea. Richards throw. Harvest. Long ball. Too much on it. It's been the story of the first half at times for Bayside. Monica Fenua. Robers turning out of the challenge of Rabin. Rabin against Saber. Free kick is going Bayside's way. Set piece in the half then. Rabin and Georgiopoulos discussing their options. Not a tall team, the Bayside side. Not really anyone to aim for at a set piece. So you fancy the direct shot on goal. It's Rabin and that is sent sky high. May have struggled to even reach a second set of goals. Karachi cuts in, dispossessed.
Karachi. Georgiopoulos straight to Fenua. Robins. Given away. Shearing. Rubin caught. Zoe Austin. Turn on the ball from Karachi. minute of regulation in this first half which had threatened goals through the opening exchanges but has very much descended into a battle since two evenly matched teams perhaps what we expected when we looked at the matchups this weekend is possibly the most even contest unfortunately it hasn't led to a end-to-end -end game very much a stalemate to this point minutes of additional time as well. Signal by the fourth official. Richards. Lisa Fanua. The heart against the line. Galea. Steered at central, and now Sydney Allen shooting from distance, and Maisels watches that one over the bar safely enough. When Allen broke, looked like it could be potentially dangerous. Had a couple of opportunities at both ends that have just exploded off the boot, though, going high or wide or nowhere near the target. Think back to Jess Hour's shot, which rolled into the arms of Fenua as Bayside's best chance. Melissa Garcia with a shot that hit both posts, went across the face, started on the left, then hit the right. from Richards in space and Lucy Richards can drive through the middle Jess Au is there a twist at the end of the first half Monica Fenua good slide challenge Attempting a volley, bends the wrong way. Sydney Allen against Lucy Richards. Now Georgopoulos can't halt Allen's progress. And Sydney Allen playing it through the left. Garcia, flag stays down. And this is a great chance to end the half with a goal. And it's just wide. Credit Maisels for the save. What a chance it was, though, in the last of the three minutes of additional time. Melissa Garcia will feel as though that should have been the opening goal of the game. So, corner kick, Galea. Allen. And over the bar. And that is met by the halftime whistle. The game needs a goal. It hasn't found one so far. As we go to the break, Heidelberg with some decent opportunities. Bayside 
the occasional foray forward as well. But it is Heidelberg United nil, Bayside United nil. Back soon.
Welcome back to live pictures from Olympic Village. You saw the stats up on your screen during half time. The most meaningful one of them is the scoreboard, though. Heidelberg United nil, Bayside United nil, and we're waiting for one of these two teams to take their chances, break the deadlock here. There were irregular opportunities during that first half. Heidelberg with the better of them. Certainly feel as though Melissa Garcia perhaps should have taken her team to the break with the advantage. But a good save from Melissa Mazel's denied her. And so it remains nil-nil at halftime. Teo Pelizzeri is my name. Great to have your company. Don't forget tomorrow night it'll be the grand final rematch from the Venado Club, 8.30pm. Bulleen Lions up against South Melbourne. And we get the second half back underway. Sydney Allen and Heidelberg now attacking the right of your screens. Bayside to the left. Both teams with one win and one loss to start the season. And they'll be hoping to avoid adding one draw. But that's currently what we're on track for at the moment. Taking a look around the pitch, it appears as though there have been no half-time subs as Mazels has hurried into a clearance to keep the ball away from the oncoming Melissa Garcia. So for those of you who may have joined us during halftime, let's recap the 11s out on the pitch. Heidelberg with Christine Fenua in goal. Centre-backs Elisa Fenua and Monica Fenua. Three sisters, Kiefer and centre-backs. Right back, Ellie Torre. Left back, Ellen Turner. As we see a body check on Margot Rubin. Referee not interested at all as Torre clears. Midfield central pairing for Heidelberg. Elizabeth Robers and... Rebecca Saber in front of them in the number 10 role, Sydney Allen. Right forward, Steph Galea. Left forward, Holly Balderston. And up top, the number 9, Melissa Garcia. And for Bayside, Melissa Mazel's in goal. Centre backs, Molly Burke and Sarah Walsh. Left back, Lucy Richards, the number 18. Right back, Zoe Austin, the number 22. Defensive midfielder, Kirsty Shearing. In front of them, Felicity Georgiopoulos and Margot Rubin. And then the front three, Emily Harvest on the left, Christina Kanashi on the right, and Jess Al up top. On the benches for both teams, as we see the clearance here from Fenua, being challenged for by Allen and Shearing. And then Rovers and Allen through ball, and they were almost away. That was important from Richards to stop the ball continuing on. Rovers once, twice. Gets it to Sydney Allen. Another long ball impending, perhaps. And the flag goes up, but I'm not sure why, because Balderston was on, even though Garcia was off. And it was Balderston, the one chasing the ball, rather than Garcia. Still, trust the referee's call. Karachi trying to use her speed down the right side. Being pursued. Turner. Karachi back to Austin. Combination of the two ex boleyn players. And at the byline, Karachi can't keep it in before it rolled out. So the benches, Heidelberg, Emma Langley a forward, Daniela Galluccio a defender, Brody Siri a forward, Maria Kiusis midfield, and Mia Mossman a goalkeeper. And for Bayside, Lauren Ferruja, who can play as an outfielder, but you suspect is the number two goalkeeper. Nina Bacalo a midfielder, Savannah Anastasopoulos a winger, Shelby Green centre-back. And Dottie Rendis, a fullback. Grant Spence and Bill Mialutis yet to turn to their subs. You do get five in the women's NPL, and you can use all five of them. So I suspect we'll see a few attempts to change the course of this game as the second half wears on. Monica Fenua. Torre, good first touch. Galia. 
Garcia. Torre blocked by Richards. Walsh claims the goal kick. Heard Melissa Maisel shouting for offside in the build-up for Heidelberg there against Garcia, who has straight offside quite a few times during the first half. Sabre, past Georgiopoulos, but behind Boulderston. Weather has stabilised considerably since the first half. Players walked out in rain and blustery winds. Second half, gentle sunlight. No wind to speak of. Perfect conditions, really. Sunday afternoon. Rabin, Jess Au. Can she lift a cross into the box? Rabin's made the run, tried to turn it into a very long one-two, but couldn't reconnect. Fanua claims out to Galea. Being chased by Lucy Richards. Sydney Allen. Weaving through midfield. Allen. Tried to slide it on for Balderston. Just when you suspect she might have been thinking about a long shot of her own. touch does get the ball out <laughs> cleared by Lisa Finua this time Harvest given away Galea Starting very deep though. Shearing able to win the ball against Rovers. Glanced off the head of Allen Garcia. Back to Elizabeth Rovers. Garcia driving it long. Burke controls on the chest, but has to find the safety of the touchline. Centre of defence. That'll be keeper's ball. Melissa Maisels, who spent the summer with Canberra United, but ultimately didn't make an appearance. Spent it as deputy to Sham Kamis. Austin. Karachi's going to try and run from behind Turner, and she does keep the ball. Cuts it back. No teammates there to support. Boulderston defers back to Turner. Richards. Forced to cut back. Burke steers it wide to the right. Karachi, Shearing's made a good run. And attacking the near post now for a goal kick. The movement was good. The execution at the end of the phase of play, not so much.
Austin. Ambitious pass. Our nearly made it work. But Fenua is able to clear and win a goal kick. On the comments on Facebook. Andrea saying both teams very organised too much, not many risks taken. Well, Sydney Allen's been the main creative player out on the ground and looks the most likely to try and make something happen for Heidelberg. Bayside, however, hugging their wings. Margot Rabin, we've seen her when she breaks wide, has been able to get in behind the defence, but not really sighted her much in the second half so far. Still in the early days, 10 minutes gone. going to bounce on to Mazels. Interesting that it is a battle of two former Burundara Eagles players who were in State League 1 last year. Rabin, French, Allen, American. Of course, you only get the two international spots in women's NPL. So all the surplus foreigners that come over inevitably end up in the State Leagues. Whether they're targeted recruits or just happen to be here. giving the ball away there, Kirsty Shearing, rather than stand her ground. Torre. Galea. Harvest snapping at the heels. Very apologetic as she knocks over Ellie Torre. And the feeling appears to be mutual. Barely noticed Janelle Samet, the referee, in this game. She's been very happy to let the two teams play. Robers, high awkward ball, Mazels calls for it, and Garcia, credit to the striker, put in a challenge, added a physical presence, and Mazels able to bring the ball down out of that contest. Leah to Allen in space can run at the defense through the defense wide on the right Boulderston's in the middle and it doesn't arrive Burke recovered in time intercepting the cross and putting it behind for a corner but it still looks like Sydney Allen the most likely to fashion a goal here from Galea can't beat the near defender Harvest so big build up for no result Emily Harvest drives it away Rabin brings the ball down and then misses Jess out it's going to invite a bit of pressure back on Al Rabin trying to turn out of a one on three and just a little tap to the ankle we saw a struggle with a knock in the first half that might be a recurrence there just caused it a just ease up for a moment. Nina Bacalo has been sent to go and warm up for Bayside. So first sub of the game imminent. As Fenua goes long and the direct attack on goal is going to have to be really accurate today because Mazels again is out of her line sharply to guard against the danger. Against some of the other teams in the league that may well be the best avenue to goal to break the shackles of a game like this but Mazels is a bit of a game-changing goalkeeper foul here on our free kick Bayside they haven't done much in an attacking sense in this second half so can they try from a free kick
Sarah Walsh. Just clips it and hopes. Not to know at all, really. Shearing, a lucky deflection. Rabin and straight at the keeper. Something out of nothing. Heidelberg were clearing and it really took a lucky ricochet off Kirsty Shearing. Suddenly played in Margot Rabin. And with the chance presented, ended up shooting it straight at Christine Fenua. Saber has to be careful here. Bayside sensing the chance to commit some numbers. Found Allen and then Turner given away. Austin. And now Rabin always oh, in space but couldn't trap the ball. And so Monica Fanua sends it wide. Richards against Torre. And the grab a little bit too aggressive. And well, I'm surprised that's a card. First of the game. I think maybe the presence of Bill Mialudis. The Heidelberg coach at the edge of his technical area might have been a factor there. Urging Janelle Samet to issue a card, and indeed Lucy Richards gets booked. I'm not so sure that's a yellow card offence, but it is what it is. And now the resulting free kick. Maisel's able to catch against the chest and roll it out to Shearing. A bit more tempo coming into the game now. Long ball. Rabin. He's going to take possession, flash it across the face. Will it sit up for Karachi? Went wide and then shot it straight back into the arms of the keeper. Now through ball again for Nua, forced to go feet first, has left it behind, and it's the opening goal of the game. Margot Rabin makes it 1-0. Felt like the goal might have been coming for Bayside, and indeed they do find the back of the net. It was a dangerous back pass. Rabin was on it in a flash, knew exactly where it was going. And Heidelberg will be left to rue that passage of play. Coughing up the opening goal. Bayside into the lead. Do you really have to wonder what Melissa Garcia was thinking there? Hit the back pass, but surely would have seen Rabin already going back. So we kick back off with a one nil lead in favour of Bayside. impact with Monica Fanua. Nina Vicalo was standing right next to the fourth official waiting to come on and suddenly returned to the Bayside bench. So the goal was obviously changed a few minds out there about whether or not to make a sub. Protests here from the bench that it hadn't crossed the line completely, the ball that Richards has to concede. Tora. Galea. And now after further discussion, the paperwork's back in and the sub is going to go through. So, Carlo hasn't been 
kept waiting for too long. Maybe the next break in play. One of the goal has changed their decision as to who's going to come off, perhaps. Monica Fanua, long ball. Walsh. Able to clear from Garcia, who will be determined to make amends for the pass that led to the opening goal. Harvest. Jess Al. Ankles tapped by Galea. Just to talking to here. And so, the first sub of the game. Waited until beyond 65 minutes to see it go through. And it's going to be Felicity Georgiopoulos coming off for one of her fellow NTC graduates. Nicolina Bacalo. Suspect that's a like for like in midfield. Sarah Walsh gets played back underway. Looping down towards Harvest. And too much on the free kick. And the wind that may have held that up in the first half is well and truly gone. I wonder if this will prompt a raft of subs here because now Savannah Anastasopoulos is off warming up for Bayside as well. Otterberg not looking quite so busy though. They're the ones chasing the game. Had a little posse of four magpies going for the collective right underneath where the effects microphone is sitting. So, don't worry, we haven't been totally inundated by birds. They just happen to know how to get themselves on the stream quite clearly. Control and left to boot in against Walsh. Sabre, Rabin, Rovers, Galea. Darting away from Richards, sending across, tumbling into the box. Burke is there, Rabin following on. Now, Lisa Fanua made the top 10 goals of the year last season, Fanua, so don't rule out a long shot should the centre back press forward. This time, Tried to pass it out to the right. throw. Garcia. Able to escape Richards, but Walsh is there for company. They had a lot of corners in the first half, Heidelberg, so let's see if they get any joy down at the southern end of the ground, rather than the club room's end. You can see in the foreground the subs warming up now. Emma Langley and Bridie Siri, the two forwards that Bill Mealudis has on his bench. Allen's corner right to the line and Maisel's won't mind fielding those, especially with no physical pressure on. Again, that is the sort of corner that would have some keepers in this league in a panic, but not one as vastly experienced as Maisel's. Savannah and Astosopoulos looks like she'll be Bayside's second change, not far away from coming on. Harvest against Galea. Richards. Over the head of Rabin. Backtracking is Turner. Bayside would really love the points today, given that two players who would be walk up starts in their best 11. And Rovers and Connie Lewis are both out injured today. Here's Zoe Austin motoring down the right. It's going to sit up at the top of the box. Cleared away by Rovers. 
Garcia sees the run of Galea, and this is danger now for Bayside. Galea leading the Bayside defence in chase. He's going to shoot, and Maisel's with a parry. Has to recover. Couldn't get there. Garcia did. And this game is level 1-1. One, one. Melissa Garcia gets her goal. And you've got to say, Melissa Maisel's could have done better with the save. Bayside make the sub, and their goal scorer, Ravine, comes off. We know that she's been struggling with a couple of knocks to the ankle in the game. Savannah Anastasopoulos comes on. Attacking change. So, game back in the balance then. Definitely needed a goal at half time, and this might continue to just open things up. It's Heidelberg's turn to play with a bit of confidence, but that pass from Rovers is chopped out by Burke. Richards. Torre. Good combination with Monica Fanua, who rides the bump from Harvest. Rebecca Saber. And late contacts. Free kick Heidelberg. Garcia. Salt Turner into trouble. Al through the right side. Karachi showing her speed. He's going to have to do it solo unless the player can get forward and help out. And Karachi, well, it ends up as a goal kick, so they can't even get a corner. has clearly put Heidelberg's potential subs on hold as well. Siri and Langley have both returned to the bench. Boulderston. Heidelberg have got the numbers here. Allen, it's four on three. Can they make it work? And the cross doesn't have enough bend on it. Galea unmarked in the middle. Alderston's cross couldn't find it. Maisel's holds on. Decent half chance for Heidelberg to go into a 2-1 lead. Save a long ball. And flags up. I suspected that was going to go up there. Didn't want to call it until the referee on the better angle raised the flag. But indeed, it is offside. Maisel's led head first anyway. Restart then. Off the head of an Anastasopoulos, but no one to follow in. again into the box able to retrieve Bacalo with first touch Sabre caught in possession Jess out a Bayside away here. Yes! 
It's out. Edge of the box. And the shot is deflected behind for a corner. Saver able to recover. Bright sunshine now. Anyone watching the highlights package back might be wondering if this game was shot over a number of different days rather than 90 minutes. Here comes the corner. Right into the mixer. And scrambled away by Garcia. Bacalo chases it down. Left foot this time. Allen. Runners break. It's two on one. And too much on it. Melissa Maisel's the keeper, is able to get their deflection. That could have gone anywhere. Marks of fortune for Bayside as it goes out for a goal kick. And Garcia has been falconed by the attempted clearance. Garcia is assessed. Brighty Siri is ready to come on for Heidelberg. Spent last season at Melbourne University, but was a colder player in the NPL prior to that. And so the sub will mark the last involvement in the game for Polly Balderston. Siri will go and take up a wide forward position. 1-1, one, one, game in the balance. Walsh, shearing. with the pass. Garcia's throw, Galea. Burke proving a difficult obstacle to get past at the moment. Fanua, drifting ball. Shearer trying to protect him from Allen, who willed herself onto it. And now Heidelberg have possession as a result. Siri, first touch, Ellen Turner breaking through the left side. Turner, Garcia! 2 1 Heidelberg. And Melissa Garcia has continued her scoring streak. A hat-trick last week and a quick-fire double today. And Bayside, after leading this game, find themselves 2-1 down. run from Ellen Turner, the left back getting forward, providing the assist. And that is a well-constructed goal. You suspect now the momentum going Heidelberg's way. Bayside's goal did come against the run. Caught out after that errant back pass. So they're going to have to dig deep here to try and find a way back into the game. Heidelberg with all the momentum at present. Turner again into the path of Siri. Can she get there before the line? That is not as Burke intercepts. Karachi. Shearing. Ball goes out.
Meisels. Anastasopoulos. Almost had a run at the ball, but Lisa Fanua was there. Jess out. Shearing. Sydney Allen. Torre. Allen. Weaving through the right side. Galea onside. And Steph Galea. Siri waiting in the middle. And can't get there. Gee, it was a teasing cross. I feel as though... Galea just put it out of the reach of Siri rather than Siri being able to run it down in time. Hotelberg perhaps sensing their chance to put this game beyond Bayside's reach if they can score a third. Bayside have got to hang in there, keep it. At only 2-1 down for these final 10 minutes. Garcia. Being pursued by Burke. Gap starting to open up. Richards volleys away. So coming up, it's a defensive change here for Bayside as Shelby Green comes on for Kirsty Shearing. I suspect that this will mean Green plays in midfield. Looks like there's not going to be any change to the centre back combo of Welsh and Burke. Sabre going for it from distance. Maisel's parried again. Garcia off the crossbar. How unlucky. And that perhaps could have been consecutive hat tricks for Melissa Garcia. Instead, denied by the frame of the goal. Melissa Garcia has known exactly where to run whenever Mazels has made a save in this game because after scoring one goal by following in a parry, she nearly did it again. She's right onto that ball and Mazels, it might even go down as a save. I wouldn't be surprised if I look back at that with the advantage of slow-mo but actually deflected off Mazels that took it up into the woodwork to stop it going in the back of the net. Bayside's chance at an equaliser. Players treading on each other's toes. Bacalo and Anastasopoulos almost in each other's way. here against Karachi, wins a foul for her trouble. And another sub, Heidelberg's turn now. They've got the lead, they're going to bring on Emma Langley. More fresh legs to try and stretch the defence, and it's Steph Galea, who always uh, is the case, put in a power of work for her team's cause. And so time becoming the enemy of Bayside as we tick up to 84 minutes gone now.
free kick to restart play. Rovers lays it out to Siri. Could be an ideal first involvement for Langley. Hooked in at the near post, though, and Burke clears. Allen evades the challenge of Bacalo. Now back to Rovers, blocked straight off the boot. Jess Au is going to drive it long, try and swing the field, but Lisa Fanua read it best. Sydney Allen. She's got players diving in on her. Rovers follows through. And now Zoe Austin under pressure. Sent out to the left side. Siri. Austin back in. Can't take the ball though. Siri. Langley missed it. Now Garcia can't chase it down for Harvest. Torres throw. Langley against Green. Torre skims off the head of Allen. Siri against Austin again, and Austin gets it out of the penalty area. Nearly cooked it up to Brady Siri there. So throwing coming, Turner, Siri. Turner, not to her feet this time. Sydney Allen. Playing the pass forward was knocked off balance by Shelby Green. Referee is going to pay the foul, bring it back. Free kick Heidelberg. Got the ball down the end they wanted. 87 minutes now ticked over. Three plus stoppage to go. Allen with the free kick. Maisels wants to set a wall even though it is from... What would be an extraordinary distance. Allen is going to go for it and sends it wide of the target in the end. Mazels was moving. Happy to see it well wide. Green and Astosopoulos waiting for the right pass ends up putting it onto the boot of Monica Fanua Langley Sabre scooping it through the right Sydney Allen committed to the ball and is in here Sydney Allen Langley totally unmarked oh has made a meal of it. That should have been 3-1 and the point safe. And Emma Langley, almost too much time to think about it. The technique totally abandoned it. And she scooped it wide. game for Heidelberg. Hasn't stopped working at the centre of defence. Back to Lisa Fanua. Sabre. Allen. Feel as though this game should be in the books now. She's going to keep trying. Sydney Allen. Will she go herself? She does. Langley the chance to make amends. And she does. And the miss is quickly forgotten as Langley finds the back of the net and makes it Heidelberg 3, Bayside 1. And that will be the point safe.
Emma Langley makes it safe, coming on as a sub. Had a really criminal miss barely a minute earlier. But was again unmarked in the box, and this time did not need another invitation to make it 3-1. So Bayside, who led this game, really brought it to life because Heidelberg had responded with three goals back in the other direction. And now, if the fourth official about to lift the board for four minutes of additional time, only a really freak occurrence you'd think is going to allow Bayside to leave this game with anything. So that'll be two wins in a row for Heidelberg and their only loss being to the defending champions. Looking ahead to next week. In the meantime, there'll be a fourth Siri looking for Langley. Kept her feet out of the numbers. Back to Sydney Allen. Allen off the crossbar. And it's put behind for a corner. That should have been a fourth, maybe. Sydney Allen, who has been a strong performer today, couldn't quite get the goal to cap it all off. And back here on Friday at Olympic Village, I know it's only early in the season, but you wonder just how important could Heidelberg versus Alamein be? Is it a battle of the third, or of the fourth and the fifth seed? going for a final spot. Corner to the near post, away by Austin. Look at the other games next weekend. Calder against Box Hill. Box Hill beaten 4-1 by Alamein this weekend. Calder, you'd think, uh, the number one contender at the moment. Bulleen, of course, being the defending champions. South Melbourne having lost a number of players. Lisa Devanna and Melina Ayres, significant departures and you feel like they're a long way from the finished article at the moment South. Could even be a case that they might be the team that's vulnerable to falling out of the top four but you wouldn't think so based on the resources the club has to continue compiling its squad. Allen and this time held by Mazes. Saturday afternoon Geelong Galaxy versus the Bullion Lions we've got as well. Bayside take on Southern United so you'd think that They'll be able to find their attacking groove once again. And you suspect after 11, 10 and 10 in the last three weeks that Bayside would be looking at, oh, you'd think at least eight, somewhere between eight and 15. And then NTC South Melbourne could be something silly, even though South might not have too many attackers in the team. They are the sort of side that has filled their boots against NTC over the journey. And that game, 2 p.m. Sunday at Knox. Again, you, you worry. And it could be a couple of lopsided uh, scores to end the weekend. But Heidelberg Alamein will be competitive. And that will be the one to watch Friday night. Back here at Olympic Village. 8 p.m. kickoff. Three and a half minutes of four stoppage have ticked by. Heidelberg want to add to their goal difference here. Sneaky reverse. Garcia won't get the chance at the hat trick. Flag up, offside. And if it is something that Melissa Garcia can work out of her game, getting trapped offside as frequently as she does, you feel as though the goals are going to really start flowing. She scored five in two, and you think it could be even more on the way if she is able to time the runs and just stop getting caught. Karachi. Bukalo. Fanua. Allen. And that is the full-time whistle. Heidelberg with two wins in a row. And Bayside, who led this game, are left to rue the fact that their goal 
brought this game to life, but for all the wrong reasons. Because after Margot Rubin scored, it was a Melissa Garcia double. And then a third for Emma Langley. That secured a 3-1 Heidelberg United win. My name's Teo Pelizzeri. Thanks for your company. It's good afternoon from Olympic Village.